Hi, and welcome to another tooling video. Here, we'll discuss the critical path analysis. When you need to schedule or plan a complex project, keeping an overview can sometimes be both hard and frustrating. In that case, the critical path analysis, or CPA, is a strong tool to use. The CPA guides you with planning all the tasks that need to be completed for your project. It also gives you a clear overview of what the quickest time path is to finish the project and when each individual activity needs to be finished. It can be used in all kinds of projects, for example, construction or research. To start, you need to know three things. Firstly, a list of all the activities that need to take place in order to complete the project. Secondly, which activities are dependent on each other. And thirdly, the duration it takes for each activity to individually be completed. In our example, there are eight activities that need to be completed in order to finish the project. Activity A is the start of the project, and with activity H, the project is finished. All activities are dependent on each other. Let's say that we are building a house. In this case, activity B, the framework, needs to be finished before the roof can be placed. But, meanwhile, the walls also need to be built before the roof can be placed. When, eventually, both F and G are finished, activity H can start. When activity H is finished, the whole project, in our case the house, is also finished. Thirdly, every activity takes a known amount of time to complete. For example, in our case, a number of weeks. The abbreviations in this cubicle mean A for the activity, D for the duration of the project, ES for the earliest possible start of the activity, EF for the earliest possible finish of the activity, LS for the latest possible start of the activity, and LF for the latest possible finish of the activity. To find out what the fastest time is to finish the project, we fill out the first line of the cubicles. We start with zero, as week zero is the starting point of the project. We use the formula early finish equals early start plus duration to fill out the remaining lines of the cubicles. When we look at activity E, this could not be done before both activity B and activity D have been finished. As activity E can only proceed when both activity B and activity D are finished, the early start time of activity E is the latest finish time of the two, in this case week 16. This same scenario is applicable for activity H. Activity H is dependent on both activity F and activity G. Therefore, activity H has an early start of week 25. As all projects are exposed to risk, it is useful to know what the latest starting times and the latest finishing times per activity are without delaying the project as a whole. In order to calculate this, we use the formula late start equals late finish minus duration. As the project as a whole should not be delayed, the late finish of the last activity, activity H, should be similar to the early finish, in our case, week 27. From there on, the last line of the cubicles can be filled out backwards. With activity D, there are two possible late finish times. As the project should not be delayed in this reversed approach, the earliest late start is used as the late finish of activity D, in this case, week 16. The same goes for activity A. As activity B has a late start of week 13, and activity C a late start of week 7, so activity A should have a late finish also of week 7. The CPA shows you the shortest duration of the path from the beginning until the end of the project. It also shows, per activity, what the earliest and latest times are to begin and end each activity without delaying the project. It also gives you an overview of where task priorities lay and which activities can be carried out simultaneously. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tooling video.